like we're making a difference in, in people's lives by better understanding. new science, I think it can hopefully change the world. It's cures for different types of cancers. Understanding of the process of protein folding. That's chemistry. That's a chemical reaction. I can help show. I'm Bob Langer. I'm an institute professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I have about 100 people in, our, in the lab. It's a, it's a large lab. We also have, I think at last count, something about 810 patents that are issued or pending worldwide. And those patents have actually helped launch maybe about 25, 26 companies directly. And I think there have been about 250 companies that have licensed or sublicensed those patents for different applications around the world. The uh, 2012 Priestley Medal uh, recognizes the research that we've done in uh, tissue engineering, which is uh, regenerative medicine, and also in the area of drug delivery systems, which are different kinds of implants and transdermal patches that have uh, affected the lives of, of, of many patients. Jay Vacanti today is, is uh, head of pediatric surgery at Mass General. He used to be head of the transplant program at Boston Children's Hospital, and he and I have worked together for over 30 years. When Jay was head of the liver transplant program at Boston Children's Hospital, he came to see me because he was very frustrated that the only way that he could treat those patients was by doing a transplant. So he and I started asking ourselves, could we come up with another way? Maybe rather than by doing an organ transplant, could we do some type of cell transplant? What Jay Vacanti and I did is develop approaches where you could use synthetic plastics or polymers to provide scaffolds, where we could then take cells, which could be from the patient themselves or a close relative, someday even stem cells, that we could put on those scaffolds to actually recreate uh, from scratch almost what that tissue organ should look like. Tissue scaffold is basically a, a polymer scaffold. It's generally we design these in three-dimensional structures. They're highly porous. Uh, cells can attach to them and grow, and we've made them in the form of noses and form of ears. I mean, but they can be made in any form you want. And really, it, it has the promise, I think, to create someday any new tissue or organ in the body. It's already been used to make new skin for burn victims and patients with diabetic skin ulcers. But I think someday you might envision that you could make a new heart, a new pancreas, new spinal cords, almost anything. So one of the patients that came to see Jay Vacanti, my collaborator, was a 12-year-old boy who didn't have a chest covering his heart. Like other 12-year-olds, he wanted to play baseball, but you could imagine if he ever got hit in the chest with a baseball, he could die. So Jay operated on him, and we actually made him a new polymer scaffold for him and uh, got his own cells, and Jay was able to make a new chest for him. Uh, so that was, a, I think, a terrific example of how you could use tissue engineering, and that boy now is uh, in his 20s, is uh, six feet tall and doing very well. What, one of the things that enables tumors to grow is they're able to draw blood supply from the rest of the body. So if there was some way to stop blood vessels from growing to the tumor, that would provide a whole new way of thinking about cancer therapy because you could keep the tumor really small and then maybe kill it with conventional chemotherapy or immunotherapy or something like that. In 1974, I uh, worked with Judah Folkman, who was a surgeon but also had made some very innovative theories in, in the cancer area. One of the challenges that he asked me to try to work on was could we actually isolate the very first substance that would stop blood vessels from growing in the body, which he and I and others thought, if it ever worked, might need, lead to new cancer treatments, and, and it actually has. But part of the challenge in doing that, we needed to come up with controlled release polymers that would slowly deliver what were called these angiogenesis or blood vessel inhibitors for several months. And to do that, I had to design polymers or implants that could release these rather large molecules for really long times. Those discoveries would then open the field up, and then many others would go forth and come up with molecules like Avastin and others that would stop blood vessels from growing and have become very successful drugs. I think over 10 million patients have been treated with angiogenesis inhibitors, and that really what started uh, launching uh, a lot of what I've done and actually has been, I think, a central part in the area of controlled drug delivery in general. There's several things that the new kinds of delivery systems do that really have changed this field and over conventional drug delivery methods. 
when you take a, a regular drug, whether you swallow a pill or take an injection, you always get these peaks and valleys, right? When you start out, the drug level's low, then it rises quickly, then it falls to a low level, and the same thing happens again. So when you get these peaks, the drug could actually be toxic, and when you get the valleys, they're not effective. So one of the things that controlled drug delivery does is it keeps it in a safe range for the entire time, so you get many fewer side effects when you take it in this manner than when you take it by a conventional way. Second thing that it does is it keeps, you, you get the drug level for going for the right length of time and you, somebody doesn't have to remember to take their pills or shots, which is actually a much bigger deal than people think. And that is leading to possibly much more efficacious treatments for cancer and other things. There are several uh, systems that we've developed or at least provide the, the basis for in controlled release that I'm proud of. One are these uh, wafers that locally deliver a cancer drug right to a tumor, uh, and that's actually been used the last 16 years for treating brain cancer patients. We've also created new polymer microspheres that can deliver drugs for really long times. A microsphere is a, a very tiny particle. It's, uh, it's probably on the order of a grain of sand or a little bit smaller uh, that you can inject into the body, and basically it, in, in the cases that we're looking at, it might deliver the drug over anywhere from a week to many months uh, at a very controlled rate to make it safer and more effective. That's helped lead to new treatments for uh, diabetes, for uh, type 2 diabetes, for mental health diseases like schizophrenia and things like that. So some of the newer drug delivery systems we're working on are targeted nanoparticles that could, you could inject in the body and it would go right to the site you want it to go, like a tumor, so you'd spare the body all the really bad chemotherapy side effects. Another system we're working on is a little implantable microchip that you can actually regulate by remote control. We actually just did the first human trials on that. Also, we're looking at uh, genetic medicines. Could we deliver new ways of, 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 of stopping genes from functioning? So those are a few of the things on the horizon, many of which we've already started to do clinical trials on. I think there's several things that excite me about what we do. One is the good it can do and, and, and has done, but I, I want to do a lot more. Two is the science that we're doing, I think it's new science. I think it can hopefully change the world and make it better. And three is the people. I mean, I really love working with my students and postdocs and seeing them develop as people and, and them have wonderful careers. So all those things excite me about the work. That's, and I've always gotten a lot of satisfaction out of it, whether it's been as a teacher or as a researcher, to see that what I do you know, helps people in a fundamental way.